Hey, welcome back to Resilient Automotive Performance. Today, we are gonna be taking a look and rebuilding this G54B for our Project Conquest. So, a few things to know about the G54B. It was actually in quite a few motors, even um, a lot of chassis that came to America, notably the D50 Ram. That was really just a small, like Mitsubishi Mighty Max rebranded through Dodge. Uh, Monteros, Raiders, they got this motor as well as obviously what we're working on, the Conquest and the Mitsubishi Sterion. So this engine follows a similar path that was kind of going on in the 80s and 90s. Uh, 240SX is a great example of you have this truck motor in a little sports car. Pretty classic formula, right? We have single overhead cam, two valves per cylinder, and a pretty sturdy forged bottom end. Um, now that's not in the case of the connecting rods until Steve went in here, but it's a pretty stout engine. Uh, they have a really funky intake track that you're gonna see here in a second, but it's large displacement and turbocharged, so it made more than adequate amount of torque. But what it ran out of was turbocharged top end, so this thing didn't even make 200 horsepower from what I could see. In literature, 195 is the max that they ever rated it coming out of the factory. That is about to drastically change. You'll be seeing here in a moment, we have a new upgraded Hybro 20G Turbo. And this motor has seen just about everything. If you're interested in what something like this costs, ticket price coming from Steve from Racetep, um, top end performance is about eight grand. So it's a pretty penny. It's a whole lot of money um, for what this little 2.6 liter is. But I think you're gonna see here shortly that it's gonna have more than enough of a performance pedigree to make good on that price. So stay tuned, darn excited to get this thing installed, get a first start going and be putting this thing together. All right, so first things I'm doing is we're gonna reinstall, woo. Oh, where our oil filter ultimately attaches to. And I'm totally forgetting the name, having a total brain fart, but we have the main oil gallery plug. This is our, oh, oil filter housing. Uh, oil filter housing, duh. Anyways, so what this does on any motor, but on the G54B is, this is gonna fit right in there, boom. Attach it to this block, and oil's gonna come through from the oil pump on startup and under normal operating conditions. It's just chain driven in here, can't see that. Just trust me. Pressurized oil comes on in, into the filter, gets filtered through the oil filter, and then goes through these different chambers out to the oil cooler. Now, an oil cooler is a really wise idea, especially if you are turbocharged, supercharged, or just generating more heat than the stereotypical, naturally aspirated, small horsepower motor. So, I'm gonna get this guy reinstalled. We have these small little O-rings that I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on, the same way that you put on your oil filter. Just get these mating surfaces cleaned, a little bit of oil to allow things to reassemble nice and clean. And then this guy gets torqued down 29 to 36 foot pounds once we get it orientated and attached to the block. Let's do it. Now, if you're doing this job, this tube plug thing is a 30 millimeter socket. So if you don't have one of those, you wanna go pick those up, about 10 bucks from any auto parts store. Let's get a little oil on here. Now this is just, this isn't even assembly oil, it's just straight up engine oil. The little Valvoline VR1 um, high performance racing oil, lots of zinc. It's gonna be great even as our startup and break, um, break in motor oil. Uh, this is what I was told by Steve from uh, Race Top End Performance down in Hollywood, if I haven't already said that enough. Uh, but we're gonna be running this stuff, it's conventional oil some of the ideas behind why you don't want to run something like a synthetic there's all different types of debates i'm really just going to go on the fact that i'm working with a guy who's been working on these forever and knows exactly what these takes and has pushed these motors really hard and this is what he said to do so i'm just going to do it um but the difference between synthetic conventional some old wisdom would say that running older engine that had looser tolerances you want to run conventional with, with higher weight oil typically. Um, I can't totally speak to that, but that seems to be what that crowd would say. And in this case, I am going to run with it. So we got it torqued down 29, 36 foot pounds. Next up, 
installing our oil filter, I like to pre-fill mine. So even though this will have a small amount of oil in it, usually you want to have these things completely drained um, and ready to go to install. Obviously you don't want any fluids in here, but I like to have even during the assembly pre-oiled. So I know if there's any accidents or something like that, there is some oil in the system. This is 51381. If you guys are looking for a part number, you're doing this yourself. No loyalty to Wix. This is just what I could find on hand when it was ready to go. Unless Wix wants to sponsor me and then super loyal, like the most loyal, the most loyal ever. So typically if you're doing your own oil changes, um, pre-filling is a really solid and great idea. And you know, all it is is just going to be filling this up a little bit to um, pre-load some oil in the system so that when you begin cranking, there's already some to begin pushing. It just quickens oil getting to the main gallery, your bearings, all the good stuff that you want protected by nice pressurized oil. And I'm gonna do this safely over like a catch can or something, because I don't wanna spill some sweet Valvoline VR1. I'm on the ground. <clears throat> yummy, 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 yummy. Oh, and I probably should have just kept this here anyways. Anyways. That would be smart to have this on hand anyways. Okay. Here's the money shot. And as well as you want to just throw a little bit of oil on the mating surfaces, any of the seals that you're seeing, we're going to have oil flowing. Just want a little bit on those surfaces. Oh, can I do it? Oh, I'm doing it. I don't really want too much either, because you can get some some spillage, which would be no bueno. Oh yeah, I don't know how many times I'm supposed to do this, but I'm just gonna keep going. All right. oh, come on. Do not want to cross thread anything at this point. <laughs> that would suck so bad. Okay. And now we get to see what hand tight is. And I'm slipping. There you go. Hand tight. Think we can get big enough that like Tony Angelo or like guys from Roadkill reach out? Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. That's, we are family. So. We are family. family. This is a family. Okay. Next up, let's do the exhaust. Let's do the fun part. Everyone wants to see the turbo. Just not yet. One sec. Hit it! I do want to have a little bit of fun with this, so don't feel like we got to make it like pro. <laughs> In the sense of like, oh, let's make it like a, like a show. Ugh. What we got here, this is the cast manifold for what came off the Conquest. In this case, we don't even need to replace it. It's gonna work fine for this. It's huge, it's heavy, huge sidewall thickness, all that fun stuff. Sure, could we get some crazy like TIG welded, T3 or four, I don't know. You get some crazy exhaust on this, sure. This is gonna work fine, it's gonna be reliable, and that's how we're using it. Let's party. Now, before I do that, I am going to clean it a little bit because this thing is dirty. All right. So I'm currently installing the exhaust studs so that we can get the exhaust manifold put back on here. But just want to show you guys what I'm doing here. We have some anti-seize and I'm not being crazy liberal with this. I'm just putting a very small dose on there, giving it a quick swirl around the threads. Anything extra I have, I just place on the greater end of the exhausted where the manifold mounts to. And yeah, it's just that simple. Exhausted aren't actually torqued down to this crazy 
amounts of torque foot pounds. So what I do is I use the lower ratings to say it's like 20 foot pounds, 20 to 25. I'll use 20 when I use this anti-seize on there just because it's a lubricant and it's gonna help um, really torque it down and you can get a false reading. Um, so if you're at 20, it could, it's most likely higher than that. Um, but I learned a lesson on Volvo I owned where if you're not using anti-seize, it's a lot cheaper to be pulling these threads out than it is to have it seize inside the cylinder head and you got to either drill and cut. It's it's a pain in the absolute butt. So I'd much rather these things back out and deal with that problem than having to go back in and drill the sucker out. And just getting them hand tight, getting them started here with the, with the nut, which is also copper. Copper exhaust stud nuts are really common. Um, you'll also notice they're slightly, in these cases, these ones might not be, but a lot of them are actually ovaled and that operates very similar to like a nylon nut does on like a skateboard or on some other parts of the car where it just helps the more you tor torque it down. It's almost, I don't know, wouldn't say cross threading, but it's, it's locking itself in place there on the exhaust stud. So this thing starts life as a TDO5 12A and has now been given new life as a hybrid 20G. So effectively all the guts starts out as a 16G, TDO, a TDO5 16G, and then we get an upgraded compressor wheel, which is out of a TDO6 20G. So if you don't like any of those crazy assortments of letters and numbers, all it is is we've made the turbocharger seemingly look the same but it's gonna perform and flow a lot more air. So let's get this thing on. And that is mated. So this is the new oil feed line we have for the build. This is by MKS Motorsports. We also took care of the engine mounts. We have half the mounts, the poly, new polyurethane mounts by MKS Motorsports are already in the car. We have the other half that actually bolts to the block installed on the block and we'll be playing with that in future episodes when we reinstall the motor. The biggest thing with these brackets and cleaning everything is really just for rust prevention and making it not only look nice, but really easy to see if there's any future maintenance to be done. If there's an oil leak on the you know, valve cover or something out of spec, painting things and making things clean helps you identify those things faster. And so that's what we accomplished with this engine and what we'll be showing you here shortly. So this is a part of the project that I've been really proud of. My brother did most of the cleaning and paint for this guy and I did the reassembly of just the components. It's a bummer that this thing is gonna be under the car and when it just looks pretty, um, but it has a lot of cool pieces on here that I wanna go over with you guys. First and foremost, the MKS Motorsport Short Shifter. This thing is both clean, it has a really nice notchy feel I think it's almost feels gated in a way, um, but it's, it's a fabulous piece of just mechanical hardware as well as MKS Motorsports transmission mount. This thing is almost a solid mount. It does use his polyurethane um, 
solid mounting to the actual transmission. This is essentially how it's gonna look in the car once bolted up. Yeah, it probably will increase NVH in the vehicle, but you're gonna get a way better, I imagine, I'll be telling you guys here shortly, a way better feel of exactly what the engine, transmission, all the mechanical bits in your car are doing. And we are getting darn near doubling the horsepower. And so having a greater sense of what your, of what your car is actually doing as you put the pedal to the metal as well as shifting, I think it's gonna be great. This is what we're doing as car enthusiasts. This was, we wanna feel one with our car. This is one of these components that is easily overlooked and I think helps us feel one with our car. And especially since this is in a daily, this is a fun car. I think it's gonna be a great upgrade. Just so you guys, a little ASMR can hear and see this thing in action because it's, it's like a bolt action rifle. So we're in neutral. First, back out. Second, back out. Third, fourth, fifth. And then just the snapback is incredible. Out. Listen to that, and then there's reverse. Listen to that thing. <laughs> Third, probably doing like 90, getting arrested in fourth, top speed run at fifth, cause you're, the cops are blaring behind you, switching around, Vin Diesel saw a little bit of reverse, cause I'm baby driver, oh, back into neutral, FD, whew, gotta calm down, if you guys like what you're seeing, remember to like and subscribe, as well as keeping out for some new merch coming to the channel. We're darn excited to have this thing where it's even at, but even more excited to have it installed. So keep in look out for some future episodes where we get installed, we do the first start, dropped in to my uncle and my cousin. Yeah, this has been an awesome project, privileged to do it. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>